In other news, the violence in northern Syria near Idlib, the last remaining Syrian rebel stronghold, took a turn for the worse over the weekend as rebel forces and Assad's Syrian military clashed. But casting aside human rights and the other laws of war, hundreds of civilians are said to have been killed, including hundreds of children and other obvious non-combatants. This as the Assad regime returns to a policy of forcing evacuations by raining down indiscriminate rocket fire. Well, here now to discuss this issue further and to see how it relates to neighboring Israel in the south is Middle East expert from the Begin Sadat Center at Barilan University, Dr. Mordechai Kedal, and Naftali Ben Simon, a journalist and a member of the Likud Party. Thank you both very much for coming in. Thank you. Pleasure. So, uh, Dr. Kedal, I want to start with you actually. What's going on in Syria? Can you break it down for us, please? Well, uh, as an introduction, we have to remember that the Idlib area remained the last enclave, big enclave, of the rebels in Syria because everywhere which fell into the hands of the regime through the last three years, people were evacuated by the green buses usually to this uh, Idlib area and they took asylum in that area. Now came the time to get rid of this enclave and the regime continues with the methods which they destroyed towns like Hamad and Homs and, and later Aleppo. Now they do it against Idlib and against the people in, in, this, in this area. Why? They want, by killing men, women, and, and, and old men and, and children, they want to convince the rebels to run away in order to protect, you know, to leave aside those civilians. However, it doesn't happen. And they continue to hide within the population, so they kill their population and the, and the rebels as well. What is, what is amazing, that was supposed to be a safe zone for all the children, civilians, unarmed people, and it becomes a, a bloodshed area that everyone... A trap. A, 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 a trap. Kind of a trap. Right, and, I mean, because I was going to say, you know, how did we get to this point where there's escalations in Idlib when, you know, as you said, this was supposed to be a safe haven, it was, the war yeah. was supposed to be ending. <laughs> Nobody is taking care anymore about Syria. Nobody is saying something in the news or uh, showing uh, these horrific uh, images uh, from there. Uh, you know, uh, it seems to me that it's one of the dark uh, year of, of the civilization in the world that we forgot people, we forgot what is it, uh, right and wrong, and we forgot a civilian who are targeted every day, and this is really one of the darkest point of the, the last six years uh, of the civilized world. So, okay, so what should Israel, you know, neighboring to the south, what should or can Israel be doing uh, with this situation, with this incident? Israel is doing almost everything that it can do uh, you know, with its own limitation. Uh, like what? Uh, we, we received in the last five years almost 10,000 civilians, children, from, from people who were wounded, and we took them to the Israeli hospital, and we give them almost all the treatment, and we save life. Literally, we save life. But w we cannot do any uh, more than that. We, you have the Russian, in Syria, you have the Iranian, you, you have Hezbollah. You, you don't have the presence of United States anymore. You don't have the presence of, of the West. So Israel, uh, b besides of declaring war against Syria, is doing almost everything with all uh, the necessary uh, steps that they, uh, they can take. Well, here we have to uh, remember the role of Turkey. The Idlib area is right next, next to Turkey. And the assumption of evacuating everybody to Idlib was that if this thing happened and the regime targets the Idlib enclave, everybody will run away to Turkey. And Turkey will accept them in order to save their life. However, Turkey doesn't do it. And from Turkey point of view, they play with the Russians and with the Syrian regime. Uh, uh, you know, they, was they, it ever realistic to, to bank on Turkey? This is these what people? they hoped because in those years. These were the hopes, but was that, a, was the, was that realistic? In 2014, when the, when the enclave of Idlib started to be the asylum for all these jihadi uh, groups which ran away to that place, when ISIS started to deteriorate, uh, uh, the, the assumption was that Turkey will accept them because those years 
uh, Turkey still sided with the rebels and with, uh, with ISIS. And the, this is the problem, because today, Turkey changed the side. And now Turkey is with the Russians, implicitly with the regime, although they criticize the regime day and night, yet they work in favor of the regime. And they do not accept these rebels anymore. And you know what, Aaron? Uh, one million uh, p uh, wounded, 600,000 dead, more than two million refugees around Europe and all, all over the world. And United Nations, when I see some uh, uh, special assembly, it's always something against Israel. So actually that, that brings uh, me... Unbelievable, the hypocrisy of the world. With all these numbers, well, we have some resolution so that, so that, against there is, there is Israel. Another, another problem which the world doesn't know about is what happened with the Yazidis. Because they are kept in a DP uh, uh, camps with the ISIS people. Yeah, uh, but it's a very specific... The United Nations keep the, the, the Yazidis in the United Nations camps with the ISIS people, those who enslaved them, those who tortured them, those who raped the girls, and this is mind-boggling what the world, how the world uh, relates to this poor, small, and, and chaste uh, uh, minority named the Yazidis, only because they are not Muslims, only because the Muslims hate them, and yeah. so forth. And this is unfortunately what continues until this very day which we sit here in ILTV. So that, so again, this, these latest points bring me uh, actually to a big concern, which is that a growing number of criticisms uh, of the hypocrisy of, of the world reaction to this, that you know, with all the dead, with all the hundreds of thousands dead and displaced, why is more focus being placed on Israel in the international community, even still today, well, even, even when Idlib is being attacked, as opposed to what's going on well, in Syria? And even within Israel, is there kind of a hypocrisy maybe within the Knesset? First of all, this is a mixture of anti-Semitism, which is embedded in United Nations corridors. So it's easier to get on Israel, so why not? Secondly, don't forget that Israel is a normal state which listens to others, while Syria doesn't listen to anyone, Russia doesn't listen to anyone. So why spend time and effort on people who do not, lose, who do not listen to anyone in the world, like Syria and the Russians? It's better to, to raid on Israel because Israel might change something in its behavior because Israel is a normal state, Western-like yeah. state. So uh, this I mean, is... You, I mean, I, I, to say it's a waste of time and yeah. to take five minutes to condemn a travesty is... I, I, would I don't like, know if I would agree. I, I, would, like, a I would like to take the whole a, world. I would like to take a different pattern. Um, it's, there is a new wave in the world, uh, the liberal uh, or the people, the, the sophisticated people, the artists and everyone, who think that the real evil in the world comes from United States, from Russia, and from Israel. So it's Trump, Putin, and Bibi. So uh, if you are uh, in this club, so you are the enemy of the world. And the rest is, uh, we, we, we cannot blame Syria, we cannot blame anyone. Assad is okay, Assad is a legitimate uh, uh, leadership, uh, leader, but if you are a link to Trump or to Bibi or to Putin, so you are, you, you should be blamed. So yeah, well. this kind of world that we forgot what is wrong and right and evil and evilness, and this is sure. really dark times for the humanity. All right, well, with that, unfortunately, we have to end it. Thank you so much for coming in again, Naftali Ben-Simon, uh, Dr. Monte Kedal, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.